When a sweet old man befriended the neighborhood birds, he never expected the relationship to be reciprocated. That is, until he met a peculiar raven who touched his heart and gifted him something truly magnificent. Jacob lived his whole life in a small town on the edge of a forest. He loved his home, a small apartment with a balcony facing the forest. For as long as Jason could remember, he would spend weekend mornings sipping coffee and reading out on that balcony. It was a tradition started long ago by Jacob's wife. She had loved the peaceful calm she found being so close to nature and shared this with Jacob. So each Saturday and Sunday, Jacob and his wife would spend quality time together, simply being exposed to nature and breathing in the crisp, fresh air wafting off the trees. They followed this weekly routine for over 50 years. Eventually, time took Jacob's wife, and he was left alone on his balcony. Jacob did not let his wife's passing disrupt his weekend tradition. He opted to continue sitting out there, soaking in the sunshine and fresh air as a way to feel close to her. Jacob would often scan through the forest, remembering all the times he and his wife had explored the woods. He remembered the hikes, playing with their children, the fights that would happen when his wife would take a walk in their woods to clear her head. It was all sentimental to Jacob now. As he navigated his grief, he explored some ways to feel connected with the forest. The most satisfying coping mechanism that Jacob found? Feeding the birds. It started on the one-year anniversary of his wife's passing. Jacob wanted to give something to her somehow, like an offering of sorts. So he left his balcony and walked to the edge of the woods. He stood looking at the small cluster of stumps that made a little gap in the tree line. Those stumps used to be tall and proud trees until a massive storm had knocked them down roughly a decade prior. Since the storm, Jacob and his wife used to sit on those stumps to have heart-to-hearts so he felt connected to her, even though she'd been gone for a year. Jacob placed some seeds and leftover meat on the stumps in hopes that some animals would come eat it. He waited and waited, but nothing came. As the night got cold and the crisp air less forgiving, Jacob finally decided to call it quits. Hopefully overnight, some critters would find the treats he left out. The next morning, Jacob stepped out onto his balcony and peered down to the area where he'd left the food. It was gone. Jacob felt joy and relief. He realized it made him very happy to give to others, and so Jacob invested in some bird feeders and a variety of nuts and seeds. He set up bird feeders, one on either side of the balcony and one on the edge of the forest to lead the birds to him. The next weekend, he sat out on his balcony, surveying the forest below. Many animals were tempted by the feeder closest to them, and Jacob waited patiently for the animals to spot the extra feeders he had at his home. It took a few weeks, but finally some small birds began to perch on Jacob's railing to eat from the feeders. This continued, and slowly but surely, larger birds started to visit Jacob's balcony too. The largest frequent flyer past Jacob's home was a beautiful raven. It looked sleek and formidable, with its ink-black feathers and capable claws adeptly grasping the rails. This remarkable bird caught Jacob's attention. He would save special bits of food, mostly leftovers from his own meals, to leave out for the raven. Because of this, the raven continued to visit. The meeting between bird and man became routine, and both slowly warmed up to each other. Jacob got so far as to be able to feed the raven treats directly from his hand, but he knew that it was significant because it made him feel less alone. Now Jacob was fairly old. He was in his early 80s, and his health wavered periodically. As winter came to Jacob's town, he experienced awful aches and pains in his joints. His mobility was limited, and this made him more susceptible to health complications. That winter, Jacob fell ill. What started as a small cold soon became debilitating as Jacob battled pneumonia. He was not in the position to sit outdoors for extended periods of time or to walk out to the forest to refill his feeders. So, Jacob spent most of his time indoors, and the local birds moved on to eat elsewhere. This negatively impacted Jacob's mental health, and he entered into a decline. Believe it or not, there is much more to the story, because Jacob's goodness and altruism was returned to him in the presence of his favorite companion.
the raven. While the smaller birds went on with their lives and forgot about Jacob and his feeders, this special bird continued to visit. Even after the food had run out, the raven would come by each morning to perch on the balcony. Jacob was encouraged by this, and he slowly started to regain his health. He would sit indoors and hang out with the bird through his screen door. Then, when he was strong enough, he started to go back out to sit with his raven friend outside. He started eating again and bringing out leftovers. The raven still let Jacob feed it, even if his hands were weak and shaky. This was a truly remarkable bond. In a way, they were helping keep one another alive. Then suddenly one morning, the raven didn't come. Jacob was concerned. Was the bird all right? Had something happened to it? He decided to stay out there and wait. The air was fresh as winter thawed and slow hints of spring sprouted from the ground. Jacob sat watching the activity and life burst out of the hibernating forest. He knew his wife would have loved the view, so he watched it for her. The day slipped by until finally the raven came for a visit in the late afternoon. It had never gone to the balcony at this time of day, so Jacob was curious what was happening. He could never have predicted what the raven had done or how profoundly meaningful that day would turn out. Jacob offered the raven some food, but it would not open its beak. So if it wasn't hungry, then what was it doing there? Jacob scrunched up a blanket and set it out for the bird. He was concerned the raven had gotten injured and was in need of rest and healing. Jacob did what he could to accommodate the animal, leaving out food, water, and the makeshift nest made from a blanket. After much coaxing, the raven settled down on the blanket. She lowered her head and finally opened her beak. Out fell something small and metallic. It hid, nestled in the folds of the blanket, so Jacob could not be sure what it was. He thought of all the stories he'd heard of birds getting lead poisoning from eating scraps of metal and shrapnel in their prey. Was the poor raven sick? Jacob gently and cautiously stuck his hand out and grabbed the metal thing out of the synthetic nest. As he held it up to the fading afternoon sunlight, he was absolutely shocked to see what it was. He burst into tears as he realized he was holding his late wife's engagement ring. It was something he'd assumed lost long ago. Many years before, during one of Jacob and his wife's disagreements, she had taken a long walk in the forest. It was the worst fight they had ever had because in a fit of rage, she'd taken off her ring and hurled it into some brush. They had spent weeks together searching for the ring and the following year, they admitted defeat, deciding it was lost forever. Somehow, the ring Jacob was holding looked just how he remembered his wife's ring, but there was only one way to be sure. Jacob rotated the ring to see the inscription inside. With love, forever. Yes, indeed, it was his wife's ring. How the raven found it was a mystery. The only thing Jacob could think was somehow the ring became visible during that year's thaw. But then again, why would the raven bring the ring to Jacob instead of putting it in her own nest, as birds are likely to do? It was too big a coincidence. Jacob decided that the raven was delivering messages from his wife. The message he received that day was heartwarming. Even after passing away, his wife was still actively loving him, just like he loved her. And thanks to her, he'd made a lifelong friend. Would you like to feed the birds and get to know them? How would you react if one of them brought you something significant from your past? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.